Good morning, sir. Good morning. Morning, 007. Hello, Q. Mission successful? On and off. Morning, Commander. Good morning, sir. Captain Forsyth. Commander, sir. <laughs> Commander Bond, sir. Mr. Frederick Gray, Minister of Defence. Morning, Commander. Minister. Well, Hargreaves, Flag Officer Submarines. Our Croyle, wasn't it? Yes, sir. I believe Ann told you about this. Yes, Minister. Over here, please, gentlemen. I take it as Ranger's prearranged course to a patrol area. That's right. How many people knew this course? Admiral Hargreaves, myself, and of course Talbot, the captain of the submarine. Good God. Where did this come from? I'm sorry, Benson, for the moment that's top secret. I see, sir. Commander, this tracing means that the Russians can track our nuclear submarines underwater and sink them. I believe it does. But how could they track them? It's impossible. No, it's quite simple, really. Heat signature recognition, most likely. With your permission, Minister? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Well, you see, we already know that satellites with infrared heat sensors can detect a nuclear missile in flight by its tail fire. Well? Someone can now locate a submerged nuclear submarine in exactly the same way, by its wake. That means they can totally undermine our Western defense strategy. It looks like it, yes. Where, in fact, did we get the tracing, Freddy? Cairo, diplomatic bag. Somebody got hold of the plans of that tracking system and is trying to sell them. They sent us that tracing as proof that it's genuine. Well, then if there is a deal to be made, the price is going to be high. High? Astronomical. That missing submarine had 16 Polaris missiles aboard. Take we have a contact in Egypt? M will give you the details. You leave tonight. You think there's a danger of the bends? Well, we'll soon find out. What do you think you're doing? Keeping the British hand up, sir. 007. At last. Good morning, sir. I think you know Frederick Gray, Minister of Defence. Commander. Minister. Q. 007. Moonraker. What do you know about Moonraker? What I read in the newspaper, sir. Then you'll know that Moonraker, the space shuttle, was being flown over here on loan from the Americans on the back of a 747. Yes, which crashed somewhere in the Yukon. Aircraft and shuttle total destroyed, correct? That's the official version. The truth is rather more disturbing, 007. Look at this. Now, that's the scene of the crash. Wreckage strewn over a large area. That's all that's left of the fuselage. We've been through it with a fine tooth comb, but there's no sign of Moonraker, not a trace. Are you suggesting the shuttle was hijacked in midair? That's for you to find out, 007. Shuttles are built in California by Drax Industries. Yes. We were responsible for the safety of that shuttle, Commander. The United States government is justifiably concerned. I can imagine. Then California must be the place to start. I agree. Don't make any mistakes, 007. The situation is critical. We've got to find that shuttle. Yes, sir. If that's all, gentlemen. Ah, just a minute, 007. I've got something for you. I hope you know what you're doing, Bond. I played bridge with this fellow, Drax. 
007 doesn't usually push the paddock button unless it's something serious, Minister. I should hope not. Good morning, Inspector. Good morning. I see you've covered everything with our Italian friends. Yes, sir. Va bene, questa è la porta. Sì, signor. Is this it? Yes, sir. È meglio che mettiamo adesso. Gas masks? We can't afford to take any chances, Minister. Frederick Gray, what a surprise. An indistinguished company, all wearing gas masks. You must excuse me, gentlemen, not being English. I sometimes find your sense of humor rather difficult to follow. On behalf of the British government, I apologize. I think you owe us an explanation, 007. I've never been so humiliated in my life. Your man should be taken off the assignment. I'll see you at the consulate. I'll have to do what he said. Dr. Goodhead reported their position 20 minutes ago. They're just coming into range of our tracking ship in the Pacific Ocean. We should have audio-visual within a few minutes from the remote onboard TV monitors. Houston calling Dr. Goodhead. Houston calling. Confirm your position. As this is the first joint venture between our two countries, I'm having it patched directly to the White House and Buckingham Palace. Well, I'm sure Her Majesty will be fascinated. We have audiovisual. Ah, at last. Double seven. My God, what's Bond doing? I think he's attempting re-entry, sir. Yes? First seal order by Vice Admiral here, sir. Send them in. Shocking news, Minister. I'm afraid we've lost our electronic surveillance ship, the St. George's, sir. We had a routine message at 1,600 hours yesterday. Then nothing. We sighted floating debris this morning. My God, Jack. How deep is the water there? Not deep enough, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, there you are, 007. Mm. Minister, Chief of Staff. Are you aware of our ATAC system, 007? ATAC, sir? Automatic targeting attack communicator. Uses an ultra-low frequency coded transmitter to order our submarines to launch ballistic missiles. Hmm. Five days ago, our spy ship, St. George's, was sunk in the Ionian Sea. She was equipped with ATAC. Now, if that transmitter were to fall into the wrong hands, it would render our entire Polaris fleet useless. Oh, every order could be countermanded. Worse, our own submarines could be ordered to attack our own cities. Have we begun a salvage operation, Minister? An official operation was out of the question. The St. George's was off the Albanian coast. We asked Sir Timothy Havelock, the marine archaeologist, to secretly locate the wreck. Before he could send in his report, he and his wife were killed by a Cuban hitman, Hector Gonzalez. The Greek police were able to identify Gonzalez from a description given to them by Melina, Sir Havelock's daughter. Operation Undertow. The information's all here. Now, Gonzalez is at a villa near Madrid. Isolate him and apply the necessary pressure to find out who hired him. You were meant to question Gonzalez, not let Miss Havelock perforate him. I quite agree, sir. We'll have to tell the Prime Minister Operation Undertow is dead in the water. She'll have our guts for garters. If you care to look again at page two, paragraph four of my report, sir, you will note that I saw someone paying off Gonzalez. Now, assuming that that was for Havelock's murder, then there is still a glimmer of hope. I don't follow. 
If we could identify that someone... Why don't you try the identigraph? Mm. Yes, sir. Well, get cracking, 007. Mm. Minister. Well, how's it going? But I've played through a high security line to the satellite. We can try Bond now. Good. Are you through to number 10? Standing by, sir. You know what I'd like? I can't imagine. A moonlight swim. Double seven, are you there? <laughs> For your eyes only, darling. Bond! 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 He's there! That's in the Prime Minister. I'll get it, Dennis. Hello? Mr. Bond on the line, Prime Minister. Ah, Mr. Bond. I wanted to call you personally and to say how pleased we all are that your mission was a success. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Don't thank me, Mr. Bond. Your courage and resourcefulness are a credit to the nation. Dennis and I look forward to meeting you. Meanwhile, if there is anything I can do for you... Please, give us a kiss. Give us a kiss. Oh, well, really, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I think we're having a little trouble with the line, madam. Give us a kiss. Double O seven. Double O seven. Bond. Have you got man? What's going on? Bond. 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 Ah, good morning, Double O seven. Morning, sir. Minister. Commander. I think you know Jim Fanning, our art expert. Yes, hello, Jim. James. Do you know what this is? Well, it looks like a Fabergé egg, sir. One of the jewel eggs made by Carl Fabergé as an Easter gift for the Russian royal family. They're priceless and, uh, and very rare. This one contains a model of the Imperial State Coach. Mm. Top marks, 007. Thank you, sir. Except it's a fake. Now, there's the real thing. It's being auctioned at Sotheby's this afternoon. This is the fourth egg to turn up at auction this year. It's from none of the usual sources. Anonymous seller, numbered Swiss bank account. I'd say that the vendor was a Russian. And now this turns up. A near-perfect forgery. I think Commander Bond should accompany you to the cell. Splendid. I could use an extra pair of eyes. Uh, perhaps we could try and spot the seller. They usually turn up out of interest or perhaps just to bump up the price. Thank you, Fanning. Not at all. If it is the Russians, it could be an effort to raise currency, to cover operations abroad or for payoffs. Either way. We'd better find out what they're up to. Yes, Minister. Eyes only, 007. Operation Trove. You'll be replacing 009. He turned up dead in East Germany with that egg in his hand. I'm afraid there's not much to go on. Well, we do have one lead, Minister. My government categorically denies the incident ever occurred. However, we request Commander Bond to return one of our most historic national treasures, the Romanov Star. In the interests of our Anglo-Soviet relationships, I'm sure that can be arranged. Uh, where is Commander Bond? Well, unfortunately, owing to the serious nature of his injuries, he's still not fit enough to travel. Minister. Commander. Good morning, sir. A new pet queue? If, 007, you'd ever bother to read any memos sent from my department, you would realize that this is a prototype of a highly sophisticated surveillance machine. Now that we're all here, you can get on with the briefing queue. Hey, good, sir. Gentlemen, a silicon integrated circuit. The essential part of all modern computers. <sighs> no lecture queue. We're all aware of the usefulness of the microchip. Well, now, until recently, all microchips were susceptible to damage from the intense magnetic pulse of a nuclear explosion. Magnetic pulse? Yes, Minister. 
One burst in outer space over the UK and everything with a microchip in it, from, well, the modern toaster to the most sophisticated computers and our defense systems, would be rendered absolutely useless. We'd be paralyzed at the Russians' mercy. That is why one of our private defense contractors came up with this, a chip totally impervious to magnetic pulse damage. Now, if I place it on the microcomparator and compare it with a chip that Commander Bond recovered from the body of 003 in Siberia, when I bring the two images together... They're identical. The KGB must have a pipeline into that research company. It would appear so. Six months ago, that company was acquired by an Anglo-French combine, Zorin Industries. I presume, sir, there has been a security check of the plant? A very extensive one, but we have no leads. What about Zorin himself? Max Zorin, impossible. He's a leading French industrialist, a staunch anti-communist with influential friends in the government. Yes, but uh, with due respect, Minister, the leak did occur after Zorin bought the company. Precisely why I've already initiated an investigation. All right, but for heaven's sake, let's be discreet about it. But of course, Minister. You have exactly 35 minutes to get properly dressed, W7. The Order of Lenin for Comrade Bond. The first time ever awarded to a non-Soviet citizen. I would have expected the KGB to celebrate if Silicon Valley had been destroyed. Mm. On the contrary, Admiral. <laughs> Where would Russian research be without it? <laughs> <laughs> Is Commander Bond here? I'd like to thank him personally. James. James, I will never forget what you did for me. Thank you so much. What's this? What's... <gasps> From Harrods, a godsend. The food here is horrible. The foie gras is excellent. Da, da, da. As Russians say, hearts and stomachs good comrades make. <laughs> What's this, caviar? Well, that's peasant food for us. But with champagne, it's OK. Bollinger R.D., the best. Mm. Uh, the brand on the list was questionable, sir, so I took the liberty of choosing something else. Superb, Mr. Bond, superb. May I suggest we resume the debriefing? Absolutely, go ahead. I'm all yours. <laughs> Where's the usual milkman? What's it say? Where's the usual man? <laughs> Flu. Hey, mate, watch it. Kitchen entrance, round the back. General Leonid Pushkin is why I defect. Watch your... your KGB superior. Yes, Gogol's replacement, when he went over to their foreign service. Once we were like brothers. But now he's a different man. Power has gone to his head. He's sick like Stalin. He hates our new policy of detente. I have here secret directive from Pushkin, Smirch Spionam. Death to spies, Minister. Da. For an assassination program with list of targets, British and American agents. When this starts, you will retaliate. Murder will follow murder. Soviet and Western intelligence could destroy each other. God forbid this might lead to nuclear war. Unless Pushkin can be, how do you say, put away. Where is Pushkin now, in Moscow? Da, ah. but in three days he will leave for Tangier. Cover North African Trade Convention. Real reason, no directive. Minister, in view of the importance of what Mr. Koskoff has just told us, I believe we should adjourn to London and consult with higher authority. By all means. Good day, Mr. Koskoff. Dead. Two in hospital, and Koskoff probably back in Moscow, if not dead by now. We're the laughing stock of the intelligence community. Our first major coup in years, snatched from right under our noses by the KGB, only hours after he defected. No trace of him. Nothing. Then there's this Pushkin matter. Mm. Well, I must be off. Meeting with the PM this afternoon. <laughs>